All right, here's a local story. Joe McLean. Joe McLean owns the movie theater, for those of you that don't know. But how did Joe start? And what is his sunflower? I don't know, because it's not up there. But here it comes. Joe's electronic know-how was the core competency. Joe's kind of a whiz kid. He's an electrical engineer whiz kid. Um, if he were in Silicon Valley, he'd been a whiz kid there as well. But he was here. So how do you leverage his skills here? Well, Joe leveraged them by boom boxes. He, you know, he first started selling boom boxes. That isn't really too good, but there was a boom box craze going on. Then he moved to um, car stereos. He was doing car stereos. That's when you actually could buy a different car stereo and insert it in your car. Yeah, that one isn't too good either. That didn't last too long, by the way. Then he went to home stereos. Then he went to home theaters. Home theaters were a lot of stock farm people and what have you were moving out here, and they wanted bigger uh, TV sets, um, and hence theater. So he started putting the theaters in. And as he put the theaters in, people were so enamored with the fact that he actually got the whole thing to work, and that was one of which was me, by the way, that anything that was electronics, I tried to get Joe to do it. So he would then do uh, security. He would then do all of the computers. All of this is electronics. So his pedal kept getting bigger and bigger and bigger. At one point, Joe came and said he wanted to do the, the movie theater. And I thought, how, how does the movie theater leverage his core competency? Well, his core competency is electronics and specifically audio. Um, and you know, audio is definitely part of a, a, a major movie theater. And Joe went off and built his uh, movie theater, and it's turned out to be a pretty good investment. This is a little startup business. It's growing. <laughs> it's really slow grower, isn't it? Um, this is a little tiny company in Rockford, Illinois, which is just outside of Chicago. Um, a woman CEO, Carrie Frank, and her husband, Dude. Dude is his real name, Dude Frank. And the, and the guy, by the way, is a dude, so he needs to be a dude with that name. In any case, they were actually consultants in the airline industry when I met them, but they had come up with an idea for a product, a little software product. They said that the airlines industry has this compliance uh, problem. Well, compliance, what does that mean? It means that there's regulations thrown at them left and right, and they're changing on a daily basis every, every 10 days. And if they uh, are amiss of those regulations, uh, they get in trouble. So how were they actually handling their compliance uh, problems? Well, paper. They were doing paper. And they were passing paper around, and mechanics and, and uh, pilots and such had to read the new regulations and then sign things. And the executive officers of the airline, same thing. Well. How much paper are we talking about for like one airline? Um, how about three, four million dollars worth of paper gets floated around in a, in a given year? How many airlines are there, you ask? There's 2,000 airlines. OK, is that the only value equation? Remember the value equation? The value equation there is four million dollars. Uh, no, because if you don't do the compliance, and the plane drops out of the air or has an accident of any kind, then your costs are legal, right? And then you go into the atmosphere in terms of what will happen to you. But let's take the four million. That's a really good value equation. So when I met her, she was just building this little software product. It was going to be iPad. It was going to be on the iPad. It is on the iPad. And she was going to price it at $20,000 and that's it. One time fee, $20,000. They have the software. It does the thing. So you probably have guessed by now that I probably wouldn't have liked that idea. Because first of all, it's not recurring revenue. I like things that have recurring revenue. And second of all, compare the $20,000 to the $4 million per year value that it provides. Well, that's not very good. So I changed that with her permission to for this particular starting account, which was Republic Airlines, I changed it to $40,000 a month, every month, 
uh, and you had a five-year contract with the airlines, and it's renewable every five years. And, oh, forgot to tell you, it's also two or three hundred thousand dollar installation fee to service your airline to teach them how to use the, the software. So we went from twenty thousand dollars end of sentence to forty thousand a month plus the other three hundred thousand for five years, and so on and so forth. So now we have a real company. Terry has a real company. She's doing about two and a half million in revenue now from zero a year and a half ago and growing very rapidly. Um, Republic Airlines was one of her first accounts. Now I'm going to show you how a sunflower sprouts a seed. See this little seed over there? That little seed over there is sprouting what, you ask? Well, the airlines, let's take Republic, they have vendors. They have, in fact, 15,000 vendors that service the airlines. Do you think those vendors have compliance and regulatory issues? Yeah, they do. So do you think that if Republic is actually happy with Kerry Frank and her software, that it might spread to the vendors? Yeah, it will. So her sunflower is popping a whole bunch of new seeds. Oh, yeah, here's another new seed. When she's in the airline, and they're happy with her compliance software on the iPad, they ask her things like, well, will it do human resource? Will it do learning management? Will it do flight book? All these other functions. And of course, she says yes. And they start adding those new functions on. So what happens? Now this one account, first of all, everywhere you look has comply software in it. Secondly, it spreads to the vendors, and we still have the 2,000 other uh, airlines. In addition to the airlines, you ask, what else could we be doing in our pedals? Well, I just named a few, right? Import, export, medical, gaming, pharmaceuticals, they all have regulatory. In fact, it'd be easier to ask yourself who doesn't have regulatory. And the commonality of her software could go into any one of those markets. So is this a big opportunity for the little company of six people, I think it has six, somewhere around six, in Rockford, Illinois? Yeah, it is. It's a, it's a huge opportunity. They just did a little, by the way, they never raised any money. So they were a, a pure bootstrap company. They, they did this on their own nickel with just friends and family money. No professional money was ever put into the company. They're just now asking for some professional money. They're asking to raise $1 million, which is a very modest uh, amount they, that was closed uh, within minutes, you know, because when investors saw the profile of what I just told you, you know, it didn't take them more than minutes to actually write, to write the check. Comply has a good opportunity. Here's an example of a nonprofit organization. How, you, how do you use the sunflower in a nonprofit organization? The Keck is uh, the leading observatory, astronomical observatory in the world. It sits on the top of Mauna Kea in Hawaii, and it has the two largest telescopes in the world. And most of the leading astronomers and cosmologists in the world use their telescope and have for many years. Their problem, they had a, uh, is money, like everyone's problem. They needed to raise more money because the government was funding some of it, but not all of it, and that government funding is going down. So you look at their community of donors. They had two, two donors, Mr. Keck and Mr. Moore. Mr. Moore was the founder of Intel Corporation, and Mr. Moore also gave them a big check, but they only had two donors. So he asked me if I would help them, and we began the sunflower process. So the first thing is state what our goal is. Our goal was to build a much bigger community of donors than two. In fact, what we said is we would like to build a community of donors to 5,000. We just made an arbitrary number of 5,000 potential donors, not that every one of them gave money. And then secondarily, if we got to the 5,000, is then to raise money. And what we wanted to raise is about $30 million, a large amount of money for somebody who, uh, who didn't have any donors. So the challenge was, 
how do you do this? What is their core competency? Well, their core competency could be technology because they've invented a lot of stuff. But what am I going to do with the invented stuff? None of them are uh, entrepreneurs. They're all scientists. None of them are interested in starting a company. So that one's no good. So you can hit that old button now. Ah, there we go. We decided that their core competency was the brilliance of their astronomers and the astronomers that came out to work at the place. They had some of the, the most brilliant astronomers in the world. In fact, if you've been reading the news, an astronomer recently won uh, the Nobel Prize. It, it was a Keck uh, astronomer that won the, the Nobel Prize. So I reasoned, let's use the astronomers. Well, how do you use the astronomers? Uh, you could send them out to raise money for the Keck. Well, that one doesn't work. It doesn't work for a lot of reasons. Uh, first of all, they're not good at raising money. Secondly, when they're out raising money, they forget who they're supposed to be raising money for. And they actually tell them about their own pet project back at, their, at the university. So that, you know, that didn't work too good. Um, so we came up with an idea, my wife and I did anyhow, called The Evening with the Stars. And we, we rented a venue on the coast of Hawaii at the, you know, one of the very fancy hotels. And we invite people to show up and give them drink and give them appetizers for free. And they're going to hear a lecture from a Nobel Prize winning scientist on black holes and birth of galaxies and uh, exoplanets, Earth-like planets in the universe. Kind of cool stuff. One, one to one and a half hour lectures, not dumbed down, just a straight lecture. And when this first started, you know, maybe 20 people would show up. And then it grew to maybe 100 people. Then it grew to 160 people. Then it, it actually outgrew the area that we were in. So then we had multiple hotels doing it on different nights. And then it outgrew those multiple hotels. And then we rented the theater up in Waimea, which has 800 seating for 800, and it filled up the 800. So where is it today? Today it has a donor base of 8,000, not two, 8,000 people. And it's raised about $10 million and, and, gr and growing. Uh, so they're a very happy camper with the, the sunflower. 